Dum 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 Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jason with JW Class BW and welcome back to the vlog. We are about to go through the process and procedure of narrowing the two inch narrowed beam that I have down to a four inch narrowed beam. And let me tell you, it was some work, a lot of work. What we have here is a couple of reamers that I picked up. I only ended up using one of them to get the job done. And also some stuff that came in. That uh, Full Flow 90, I wanted to kind of show you guys what that was all about. So if you're new to the channel, we talk about Volkswagen stuff here, and more specifically, Volkswagen Beetle stuff. And more specifically than that, 1956 Oval Window Ragtop Goose. Goose is right there, looking good, looking fine, in widescreen, yes. <laughs> Goose is back on the road after being off the road for a little while because of the beam and it drove me crazy. So get ready for the video guys. If you want to know how to narrow your two inch narrowed beam, it's going to be good information for you and maybe it can help you out if you're trying to narrow your beam, period. All right guys, right after this intro, we're going to get into the content. All right. going on guys it's jason with jw class vw and we are looking at possibly narrowing my beam a little bit i've got uh, a little extra here my beam is two inch narrowed on both sides but what i have a problem with here and let me show you is i got some rubbing rubbing on my fender now i just found out about this because well you guys know that my beetle is lowered right well it is lowered and I had my kids in there, had everybody in yesterday, and with my new brakes, my bad brakes, that have an offset of a three quarter inch, they rub a little bit. So we're looking at possibly narrowing my beam a little bit. I'm gonna pull this off and take a look at it, and we can talk about that. Okay guys, so we are back on the beam, and what I'm having to do to cut off this area here is, pull out these bearings first all right to get the extra bit of clearance i need to inset my my hub assemblies is i'm going to cut them flush and what that's going to allow me to do is get the extra bit of clearance that i need what i'm using is a pilot bearing uh removal tool that i bought for a jeep a long time ago it's just a pilot bearing removal tool you can get from harbor freight and this one's actually from harbor freight and it's working great at removing these bearings so these come out as just one assembly pretty simple we'll go ahead and not take these two out real quick and then uh i can take you to the other side and show you what it looks like flush cut but i'm gonna go to flush cut these two and i guess you guys can hang out and watch me do that now if you're looking to narrow your beam like a stock beam, this is going to be quite a bit different than what I'm doing right now because you're going to have to add the adjusters and everything too. And this beam is a two inch narrowed beam that you can pick up from, I believe this one was from CIP1. I'm not positive, but uh, I will link it in the description below. I'll find it and link it in the description below. But what I'm able to do is just lob these off to get the extra bit of clearance that I need. And that, my friends, is pretty darn cool. Then you just tighten the, the center down first here and it grips on the actual bearing. Just get it nice and snug and then run this down. And then she'll just come right on out, man. I was just gonna pound it in further, but the thickness of the actual tube gets wider as it goes in, which makes that just about impossible to do. All right, all right. Let's get set up to cut these off. It just, the, uh, the skill saw makes pretty quick work of this right here. Oh, where's she at? Can I get it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, well, maybe not. Yeah, 
Yeah, that was a little hot. I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. That's uh, definitely a little bit more material than I really wanted to take off, but uh, oh well. Oh well. Let's see if I can reposition a little bit. That was a lot better. All right, let me get my grinder over here and my, we'll clean up this stuff a little bit. Cool. Oh man. Let's see, let's see. Let's go to water. Oh, hey guys. Do me a favor, it's uh, time for a little bit of break. Don't forget to hit that subscribe. The subscribe thing off to the side. And like and share the content, guys. Now back to the video. Get back to that uh, beam narrowing and a little bit of alignment coming up, right? All right. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, these are the reamers that I got when I was first going to be installing the polyurethane bushings I understood that you had to ream those bad boys out and I picked up a reamer to be able to do that as well this is an adjustable reamer and it has a size on it and it tells you if you can see it I don't know can you guys see that yeah that is the adjustment range and it works out really good <laughs> what I picked up here are some art supply for like paint brushes to keep my reamers in good shape without getting too juggied up. So yeah, they're gonna work out great. But this is the workhorse. This is the one you're about to see doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And if you're on my social media, Facebook, Instagram, then you have already seen me use this thing a few times. All right, this is the behemoth. Yes, you can see where it's adjusted right now. And to be able to get the cut that I needed, which is the same thickness as this pretty much, actually had to go a little bit less than that because of the way that I was working through there. It was taking off a little bit more than it needed to, but I figured that out on the first cut that I did. So to adjust these, all you do is loosen up the collar, whichever direction you want to go. And then if you want to make it wider, you would loosen this way and then go up and you make it smaller. You loosen the collar up here and collar here and go down. You guys will figure it out. And the way that you measure this is just with a caliber across the blades, get an idea of where you need to be. Oh. All right, guys, it's time to do some reaming. So I want to kind of show you what I have to do to get set up for this thing. First off, this is a 22 millimeter socket that I have on here with a 3 8 chuck and a, an adapter to get it to work and fit the half inch. And that locks in really nice on the reamer itself. So the point of having stuff behind me here is so that I can get a nice locked in position to hold the reamer while I'm running it. Because when you start running this bad boy, you don't want to be hopping all over the place or kind of struggling to provide the force that you need to, to kind of guide this ream right into that axle tube or torsion tube, whatever you want to say. Now, another thing that I'm doing while I'm reaming is I'm taking breaks to allow the blades here to cool off. Let me get you a little closer so you can see what I'm talking about with the blades. All right, so here is the reamer and the blades themselves. The adjustable reamer, I wasn't sure if it was gonna work, but I'm gonna tell you what, this thing works like a champ. So I'm oiling the blades all the way around here and just kind of, you know, just throwing this lube on here while I'm running the reamer. Let's go ahead and start some reaming and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about going through the process, okay? Let's lock this back down because it got a little loose. Yeah, it's definitely something you want to check before you start reaming is that everything is locked in nice and tight because if it's loose, you're going to have a jacked up ream. All right, guys, let's get you into position, see what's going on.
So uh, once I figured, actually, once I finished narrowing the front beam, the toe was so far out. I mean, the wheels were facing like this. <laughs> it was crazy. So I did like a rough adjustment uh, last night before I went out for a drive just to, so I could go for a ride. But now I got to go ahead and get the toe in the right way. And you guys have seen me do that on another video. So that process is about to happen. I'm going to go ahead and time lapse for you guys. But uh, here we go. So what is it that you ask, Jason? How do you lock your steering wheel in place <laughs> before you do an alignment? Well, let me show you. Oh yeah, guys. I got my Mossy Oak cargo strap. And she is locked in place. Ooh. 
It's a little warm down here today, guys. So let me go ahead and explain some of these numbers to you when it comes to the toe adjustment. Well, first off, one eighth or four millimeters is your max toe that you want to have between the back tires, well, the, the back of the front tires and the front of the front tires. What I have right now for my toe is on my back tires, I got 51 and three quarters. And on the front, I got 50 and three eighths, which means I got a little bit too much toe in. A little bit too, too much toe in. And then some of you guys asked about, well, how do you know which tire to move? How do you know if it's the right tire you gotta move in or the left tire you gotta move in? Well, you mark your center point on your beam. And for me, it's really easy because I got my adjusters right there in the center of my beam. You mark the center point on your beam. And then I go from center tread to the center of the beam to figure out how far out each tire is. And then what you wanna do first is, well, you wanna kinda make sure that that number is even, as even as it can be, and then start making your adjustments on your toe. At the same time, once you're making the adjustments on the toe, you know which tire you need to move based off of this right here. And right now, what I'm, what I'm seeing is I need to adjust this one back out and this one needs to go in. You see what I'm saying? Like they both need to go like this way to get my toe where it needs to be. So time to get that going. See you guys in a minute. Whew, guys, sweaty, sweating a little bit, for sure. So what happened there is I backed out, went around the block a little bit, came back with the suspension settle. Gonna check the alignment one last time. We ended up squared away. Squared away to the center of the beam at uh, 26 inches on both sides, and then squared away uh, on the toe too, like front and back toe was almost perfect. So what happens is, normally when you tighten down that adjustment, the last adjustment, you get that little bit of eighth from tightening things down. So I'm gonna check and see what we got. All right, okay. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we ended up with. Oh. Fifty-one and three eighths. Fifty-one and a quarter. Well, it's a little less than three eighths, so I'm definitely within spec. So we ended up right in spec. Right at the start of spec, so perfect. Perfect, man. Hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> it's early Saturday morning. I'm just about finishing up editing on this video to get it uploaded for you guys. It's a little gloomy outside. You wanna take a look? It's gloomy. Oh, rain. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed this beam narrowing video. It's the first time I've ever done anything like that, but uh, you can't be afraid of things that you haven't done before. You just gotta get in there and and do it. And if you jack it up, you can fix it, right? Which I just found something else I have to fix on Goose. Dang it. <sighs> Info coming on that pretty soon, guys. But once again, if you need any information on tools and or like links to stuff that I found, hit up the description. It'll be in there. Don't forget to comment below, guys. I really enjoy talking to you and I enjoy answering your questions when it comes to stuff on Goose because, man, when I jack it up, you guys win <laughs> because you get to learn from my experience. That happens more often than uh, than I like for that. But, <laughs> but thanks to everybody out there, guys. My subscribers, the ones that have been here forever and all my new subscribers. You guys are the best. Wouldn't have this channel without you. And yeah, man, it's just super cool. I never thought I'd be getting close to 2,000 subscribers, which we're almost there. <laughs> Hope you guys are having a great weekend. Staying safe out there. See you guys soon. This is Jason with JW Classic VW, and I'm out.